Wade and Trustee Holden for the remembrance, the remembrance of where God has brought us as a people. And we haven't reached the promised land just yet. But if we stay in the will of God, amen, if we stay in the will of God, he will continue to lead us home. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Amen. I greet you again in the spirit of Christ, my savior, my redeemer, the very lover of my soul. It's a joy to be able to break the bread of life with you all again today. It's been a while since I've been in this pulpit, if you will, on Zoom. But let me tell you, when I take the time and I look back over my life, I have a testimony, and I know you do too. Let us pray for a moment. Father God, we are here, we're on one accord, and we want to hear your voice. Father God, I decrease and you increase. Speak to us, oh God. Have your way, allow your anointing to flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast through this artificial intelligence, knowing, oh God, that nothing was made without you. Touch, heal, and deliver in your own due time. In the precious name of Jesus, we give thanks in advance. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Y'all know when we start talking about the Lord, I get loud and I get ugly, amen. So it don't matter if you got your cameras on, wherever you are right now, just give God the highest praise. Give him a hallelujah. It was him that kept your heart beating on time. It was him that gave you the movement of your limbs this morning. It was him that given you this computer to even get onto the internet that we can't even see. It was God, nobody but God. Don't want to get ahead of myself because this message God gave me a while ago and he continued to pour into me this message. Hallelujah. From the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, the first through the ninth verses, Minister Randolph read so awesomely for us. And you know what? I got tickled when we first came online because pastor was talking, Dr. Smith was talking. I said, y'all better get out of my sermon, get out of the message. But it just confirmed to me, hallelujah, that God has a way of bringing his children together to accomplish what he has set in place. Amen. So we're only going to deal with one verse this morning. We're going to deal with that ninth verse. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a subject matter, if you want to write this down, I love for folk to take notes because you know as we age, we can't remember all the bits and pieces. And I want to remember all the bits and pieces that my father serves me. Amen. In due, D-U-E, season. Amen. In due season. The apostle Paul here has established a church a long time ago in Galatia. As we know it today, it's modern Turkey. I like to understand where the, the men of God and the women of God were dwelling at the time. But we're right here in the United States, in Men Hill, Matthew, Charlotte. We're right here. And this very word is still applicable to us today. And the Galatians, of course, when they were first established, had all the joys that we have. They were excited about this new word, new converts but you still have that remnant of the Jews, amen, who were telling them you have to abide by the Mosaic law, amen. But we know that Paul said Jesus came and he fulfilled the law, amen. 
Are you on the same page with me? Do you see the Galatians being a little confused at the moment? But the last thing he says in this verse is be not weary in well-doing. Now we know that according to man, we operate in four seasons. And I like to start with spring because that's the beginning of things. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Amen. But God has given the believers a fifth season. A fifth season. That's called due season. We all have these due seasons in our lives. Now, the teachings that Paul had given the Galatians, they were walking with them. They were living in them. And like I said, you still have this remnant of the Jewish Christians that were saying, no, you have to be circumcised. And of course, Paul has said, oh, no, not that way. It's the heart. You're missing the point. Remember what I told you. So Paul is encouraging them to remember what I said. Remember what I taught you. In those first eight verses, it talks about if someone is taken in a fault or in a sin, we don't condemn them. We restore them in meekness, lest we fall prey to the same sin. Amen. Not to think more highly of ourselves than we are, because when we become puffed up and conceited, we're nothing. We are nothing. Did you hear what I said? We are nothing because we can fall just as quickly as we rise. He also tells us and reminded those Galatians to bear one another's burdens. When your sister is burdened, you have a burden. When your brother is burdened, you have a burden. When your pastor is burdened, you have a burden. And you share that in prayer. I love our Saturday morning hours of prayer. That's when we pour out our hearts, minds, and soul collectively before our father to let him know we care and we're concerned and we're connected. Amen. Goes on to say, if we sow to the flesh, we'll reap to the flesh. But if we sow in the spirit, hallelujah, we'll reap in the spirit. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, in due season, we shall reap. Now, I, as I studied and as God spoke, took me all the way back to the garden. When he created the garden of Eden, it was perfect. It was perfect. Everything that he spoke into existence was operating just as he had commanded it to do. All the vegetation was reproducing. But at this time, there was no rain. The word of God says a mist rose up and watered the ground. We don't really hear of the word rain until Noah comes on the scene. This is well after Adam and Eve have been evicted from the garden. Amen. And at this time, the earth begins to have seasons. Now we know science says our seasons change because of the earth's axis and the way it rotates. That's man's knowledge of what God had already ordained and set in place, amen? Genesis 22 and eight says, as long as the earth continues, there will always be a time for planting, and a time for harvest. There will always be cold and hot summer and winter, day and night on the earth, according to what God has said. So let's talk just a little bit about the seasons. I always like to deal with the natural man first because that's what we put out front. And I finish with the spirit because that's everlasting. Amen. Spring. What comes to your mind when you think about spring? We think about spring as an awakening. We see the bears coming out of hibernation who have slept all winter long. We see buds of grass. We see trees flowering. We see blooms coming up, daffodils, tulips, and all of those beautiful flowers. We see the Bradford pears. And I know some of y'all don't like Bradford pears, 
They're beautiful trees, but they work with your allergies. They make you cry. Amen. You got to go take medication for it. But they're beautiful trees. Amen. Beautiful trees. We also at the house do our what? Spring cleaning. Come on with it. We heist up the windows, get your Clorox and your bleach, and you start washing everything down. You start getting rid of old stuff, cleaning out that house, moving that dust. Amen. Springtime. A brand new start. When we come out in the morning, it's a little chilly. Amen. And the sun is so bright, sometimes it makes you squint. But you feel that warmth of the sun, of the Father, just bathe in your face and your body. Amen. Spring. Gotta have spring. Spring gives way to summer. Now, the summer brings what? Hot sunshine. Amen. And if not for the rain in the summer, we would be disintegrated. But in the summer, we think about hot sunshine. We think about vacation with families. We think about traveling to the mountains or to the beach, whatever your preference is. We have on shorts, our flip-flops. We chilling. No school, no classes to go to. I can hang out with my buds, do my thing, go to our favorite fishing hole, chilling. Amen. Catch the fish. Come home. Fry them up outside. Just enjoying the goodness of the Lord. We think about the gardens. These comes back to me. Some country girl, y'all. The gardens with the fresh tomatoes that you can just wipe off with your hand and take a bite. Amen. The cucumbers, the squash, the peaches, the plums, all of those things. Summer. Just summer. Playing with your friends out watching the stars at night just looking at God's amazing creation, just happy in summer, go lucky, just free, amen. And summer gives away to fall. Now, after all of that heat, we thank God for the black man that created air conditioning. You remember that? It was an African-American man. Amen. I hope somewhere down the line his family's being paid for it because I love air conditioning. And we come out of summer into the fall. We begin to pull out the sweaters. We begin to pull out the nice little uh, scarves that we want to wrap around in our fashion and we're not sweating in our clothes and we chilling, but we still outside and we smell the wood from the fireplaces, fall, cooling down, and all of those beautiful leaves that gave shade over the summer are turning from that beautiful green to browns and golds and reds. and All of the, the, the vegetation is becoming dormant as fall comes in and harvest time is coming. We see the machines in the fields getting in the cotton and we see the hogs being killed. It's hog killing time and all of those wonderful things that we think about in the fall, that Thanksgiving meal, amen, that's set for the whole family. And heaven forbid we forget football, amen. You got to have your football season for the fellas, and that's all right, amen. And then fall, after we've pushed the pumpkins away and the frost has fallen on the greens. We got those in the freezer ready for the cold, hard winter. Now, I know a lot of us don't like winter, but some people do. And in the winter, y'all know one thing about cars, gentlemen, and some women. If there's anything wrong with your car, anything, it's going to show up in the winter. Amen. Now you got a bill. Something has got to be paid. But we look forward to the snow. We don't look forward to the ice so much. We look forward to those heavy food, those chitlins that we are going to get, that ham that's been cured since the fall. And we look forward to all of those heavy foods that we like to eat. Chicken and dumplings, Brother Cliff, that's a winter food. Amen. Yes, absolutely. The pinto beans and the cornbread and the sweet potatoes, all of those things are for the winter. 
But we as African-Americans and Americans in the world in general have set aside Christmas when we celebrate our Savior's birth. We don't know that that's when he was born. We don't believe that. But it's okay because he rose in us one day. Amen. Now, moving from all of those seasons of our secular lives, let's look at how our spiritual lives go through seasons. Amen. In the spring of our lives, we're born, we're growing, we're young, we're healthy. We're curious about the world. Our futures are bright. We're innocent and we're full of hope. Amen. We're full of hope. We're living life at its best at our parents' expense. Amen. Our only job is to get a good education. That's what we're told. That's your job. I'm going to take care of your needs, but that's your job. We have as children, we get that education and parents ask us to be respectful and be obedient children and good things will come to you. So you do what you're supposed to do, get the good grades, do what you're supposed to do as far as your chores and you're rewarded with going to the Friday night football games or the basketball games or what have you, or you may go to an amusement park or a county fair. I used to love to go to the little county fair and ride them little raggedy rides. I thought that was the best thing in the world. Amen. The spring of our lives gives way to the summer in our lives. In my mind's eye, I see that we now what we call grown. And we're ready to conquer the world. Our bodies are tight. We got that 36, 24, 36 working. Them brothers got the pegs popping out. Those biceps and triceps are popping. We looking good. We got all our teeth. They straight and they white. Amen. We got the brick house and we got the man. Oh, the man. Let me tell you, he got the six pack and he got that swag. He got that voice. And we say, oh, let the good times roll. Amen. That's the summer of our lives. We've gotten the education piece down, Pat. And now we're ready to move into the real world. Amen. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to do nothing. I can come and go as I please. I can do what I want to do, when I want to do it, who I want to do it with. But with that adulthood in that summer comes much responsibility. Amen. Now the bills don't have mom and daddy's name on it. It's your name that's on that bill. And let me tell y'all, they come every 30 days. Every 30 days. Every, hear what I say, every 30 days. But we're working in our chosen careers and our chosen professions and we're moving along through life and we're trying to accomplish those things that we've dreamed of while we were in the spring of our lives. And we move into thoughts of, okay, I'm searching for something. I'm empty. I, I, I'm just not feeling fulfilled. That's when those eyes go back to that 36, 24, 36, and that swag. We move into marriage and then children and then the bigger mortgage because you're moving, you're growing, you're expanding. You're ready to make your mark in the world. You've established your reputation. Amen. You've established your businesses. Amen. And you're ready to step out and let the world know I'm brother so-and-so. I'm sister so-and-so. I'm Mr. So-and-so. This is who I am. And then here comes fall in your life. You feel like you got life figured out at this point. You kind of got a little bit of knowledge. Notice I didn't say wisdom. You got a little bit of knowledge and you think you know how things operate. You're no longer searching. You're settled. You've gotten married and you've gotten children and they're doing their thing. Amen. And you want to sit back now and kick up your heels and you want to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You've come off the battlefield. You don't have to get up at 430 in the morning anymore. You can sleep in a little bit. But I've noticed even with the retirement of my husband, he cannot sleep in. 
he still gets up. Amen. And that's what we do. But we want to have now, in the fall of our lives, we want to have peace. We want to have quiet. We just want to chill, if you will, and sit and watch the grass grow. Watch the sun go down. Watch the beautiful sunset. And then in the morning when we do get up, we want to watch that beautiful sunrise that God gives us. But all in the same token in the fall, we're looking at our investments. We're looking at the political arena. And y'all know that's just always a mess. Amen. Always a mess. But we have to speak. We have to speak to that. There's an uproar with the economy. And then you sitting there wondering, Lord, mm, what am I going to do now? And we begin to look back over our lives. Y'all know hindsight is 2020. If we knew then what we know now, amen, whole lot of decisions would have been different. And even here in the fall of our lives, some folk make a bucket list. They come up with things that well, I didn't do it in the spring. I, 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 I didn't do it in the summer, but I better get busy so I can do this. Amen. And here our health starts to fail. There goes some of our retirement money, paying for medication, hospitalizations and things. And our vision is blurry. And some of us have lost some teeth and we've gotten the parcels and the bridges and we still got a nice little smile. Amen. And that six pack that those fellas had has turned into a case. Amen. It's turned into a case. And that 36, 24, 36 is not a total sum of it all. Amen. So our bodies have changed. And that physique that, 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 that we had has now gone to cycle. It's gone. It's just gone. But moreover, we feel at this point in the fall of our lives that it's, it's, it's over. It's pretty much over. But let me tell you, when winter comes, when winter comes, we just want to roll up and just say, okay, I lived my life. I did a good thing. I was a good person. But oh, my brother and my sister, mm. Let me tell you, now let's talk about the seasons in a believer's life where Christ is the center. Amen. In the spring, that's when you first find Jesus. He finds you. Y'all meet up. You're excited. You are thanking God for helping you get over fool's hill. Amen. For keeping you for not allowing the enemy to take you out because that was his desire to still kill and to destroy you. But here we want to tell everybody that we come in contact. Let me tell you about a man. Let me tell you about the God that I serve. You're excited about sharing your testimony. And that's where the Galatians were. They were excited when Paul came and he shared this new gospel. They were excited. And as time went on, as the seasons changed, your spring turns into summer. Well, here we go in summer. Now I've, I've, I've gotten pretty much, I've read this Bible thing. I, you know, I, I, I got it. I know the word. I'm sharing it. I'm preaching it. I'm teaching it. I'm living it. Amen. I'm doing the things that God has called me to do. I've discovered my anointing. I've discovered the calling on my life. I've discovered the work that I must do in the kingdom to grow it here on earth. And you're walking in it. You're being the missionary that you're called to be. You're being the apostle you've been called to be. You're preaching, you're teaching. You're clothing the naked. You're feeding the hungry. You're lifting up and encouraging the brokenhearted. You're doing all of these things in the summer of your life as a believer, amen. 
And then, like I said, here comes these folk in our lives today. Are you sure that's what you're supposed to be doing? Bringing doubt, bringing fear, bringing supposedly constructive criticism, supposedly. But you better know in your know that in this summer, it's time for you to come out of the shade and to walk in the anointing that God has called you to walk into. Amen. And then we move on into the winter, all oh, the winter of a believer's life, knowing that you have done the work that was assigned to your hand, not to anybody else's hand, the work that he has assigned to your hand. And here comes the enemy. You lose that job that you got yourself educated for. You lose that spouse that said, until death us do part. And then death comes to a loved one that you prayed for to be healed in their body. Your children that you train and that you've poured into make different decisions. Your fire has died down and you have a flicker still there. That faith, that seed is still there. You've become weary because you just don't understand why they don't understand. You just don't get it. Just like the Galatians. And here we are. No doubt in the Galatians mind, they were still thinking, but I feel something different in my soul. I hear what the Jews are saying to me, but what this man Paul said gives me joy. It gives me strength. It propels me and it compels me and it constrains me. Amen. So we know we're living under grace. We know by his stripes, we are healed. We know we have all of the promises of God to rely on because he said, if you knock, it shall be opened. If you seek, you shall find. If you ask, it shall be given. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Are you knocking? Are you knocking? Are you knocking? And we know by faith, we have received redemption. We know we have established in the heavens, eternal life. Hallelujah. Until the day that we are called home or he returns, we have to work and we have to wait on our due season. Hallelujah. We have to work. And what does that work mean, Minister Glow? What does that work mean? That means living the life, not just telling people about it, but showing them how you can forgive when you're mistreated, amen? Showing them how you can love when you're hated. Showing them, hallelujah. Let's look at some other things in due season that come in due season. When the word do comes to your mind, what do you think? Do means you're owed something, amen? Do, D-U-E. Don't you just hate to see a bill that says past due? Oh yeah, we don't like that, amen. But in due season, hear what I say, due season, we as believers are the receivers and God is our donor. He owes us something, amen. Because he said in his word in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Think about nine months. In nine months, a new life, God can bring into the world in due season. In 12 years, you get a high school diploma in due season. Add four more years to that, you can get a degree in due season. Add three more years to that, you can get a Juris Doctorate in due season. 10 to 14 years to become a practicing medical doctor in due season. And even at the age of 35, you can run for the office of president in due season. Now, seasons vary in the length of time. Everybody's season is not the same, but we have to have seasons because that's when God grows us. That's when he purges us. 
that's when he teaches us and molds us into what he would have us to be. Amen. So we shouldn't rush away spring. We shouldn't wish, oh, I, I used to say it. I did. Ouch. I'd be glad when I get grown. Amen. I'd be glad when I get grown. You're washing or you're rushing away your spring. Amen. Don't rush away your spring. Enjoy being there, learning of God, knowing who God is, seeing how his hand operates in your life. Amen. Don't rush away summer. Enjoy the sunshine of your life. Amen. When you're feeling good, your body is well, and you can really get out and reach those that need to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. But most of us can wait until winter. We don't really want that. But we have to go through the winter, hallelujah, to get back home. Hallelujah. Even this pandemic, the winter of our lives, because when we get cold, we want to stay home. We want to get next to the fire. Amen. And that's what I believe God has done with his body. Amen. Sit at home. Think on me. Seek my face. And I'm going to heal your land. Amen. That's the season of winter. We need all of those seasons. We need all of those seasons. None of us came into this world like Jesus did. He knew his purpose for coming into this world to redeem us. But even at 12 years old, and I don't know of many that could teach a doctor, confound the elders, but Jesus in due season, hallelujah, did just those things. He did those things because he was the embodiment of God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's look at some of the folk in the word. Now, Abraham and Sarah had a son of God's plan in due season. Now, Ishmael came, but that was out of season. Amen. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. 12 long years, all the doctors. But in due season, when she touched the hem of his garment, hallelujah, she was immediately made whole. The new children of Israel. And I say new children of Israel because all of those folk that were murmuring and complaining died in the wilderness. But in due season, the children went into the promised land. Hallelujah. David, shepherd boy, went from a shepherd's staff to the palace and a king's crown. In due season, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In the fiery furnace, hallelujah, in the fiery furnace, but came out not even smelling like smoke in due season, hallelujah. Esther became queen in due season, hallelujah. Ruth found her Boaz in due season. Daniel came out of the lion's den in due season. Job's possessions were restored. His health was restored, hallelujah, in due season. In due season, Joseph went from the pit to the palace, but in due season, Jesus came in 42 generations, hallelujah, 42 generations, long season, but he came, hallelujah, turned water to wine, healed the sick, laid hands, eyes were restored, sight was restored, people were able to walk again in due season, called Lazarus from the dead in due season. Hallelujah. Is anybody feeling their season? Do you understand what I mean now when I say in due season? We can't faint. We have too many witnesses. Hallelujah. In the word of God that says, if we don't faint, hallelujah, in due season, we're going to reap, even when we're talked about, even when we're lied on, even when we're mistreated, we're overworked and underpaid, even when we're abused, shoved to the side, when we fall down. Hallelujah. I encourage you to stand strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because in due season, 
in your due season, you're going to reap. You're going to reap. Hallelujah. Continue doing, saints of God, what God gives you to do. Your heart, your hands, in due season. We can't give up now. Look where he's brought us from. Hallelujah. I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us. You might give out, but don't you give up. Hallelujah. God is so worthy. He's such a faithful God. Even David said, if my mother and my father forsake me, he will bear me up. He'll never leave nor forsake me. Beloved, 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 I don't care what's going on in your life's journey. Make the choice to follow the less traveled road. Hallelujah. Follow Christ. Amen. He has a design for you, but it's in due season. It's due season. Hallelujah. Don't give up. He encourages us. Don't be anxious for nothing. Stay in the season that he's planted you in because in due season, you come into the next season. Amen. You're going to get a little more. You're going to get a little more. You're going to get a little more. When you make those prayers and supplication, make those requests known unto God. He already knows. He already knows. And he just wants you to know. But in due season, in due season, if you're working mm, and you're waiting, that dream, that plan, it will come to fruition. That house that you want in due season. That spouse that you want in due season. Hallelujah. All of those things of the land that you want in due season. That way with spouse that you keep lifting up to God in due season. That way with child in due season. In due season. That family member in due season. In due season, we can't faint. We can't faint. We got to keep praising, thanking him in advance. Keep worshiping. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep serving. Keep giving. Reaching the lost. Hallelujah. But most of all, keep loving. The word declares they shall know us by our love. They shall know us by our love. Hallelujah. And in due season, not only will we reap the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, but in due season, when he calls us home out of this flesh into his presence. Hallelujah. Where we can shout our troubles over and say, I waited for my due season. The campus of walking by faith community church will come in due season. Hallelujah. And everybody that steps foot on that will know we waited and we trusted and we worked in due season. I love you all. God bless you. Enjoy the season that you're in. Seek God's face. Be anxious for nothing. Continue to thank him in advance in due season. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him praise because he's worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. I do season. I do season. Yeah. Hallelujah. Season. Thank, Thank you, God. You, Lord.